Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Daystate Wolverine B on test, plus a roundup of top gear from the IWA show in Germany. But before that, I'm using night vision to target farmyard rats after dark. Right, we're back out on the farm after rats tonight. Last time we were filming here a few weeks ago, I was using lamping gear and it's apparent that the rats were very lamp shy. On top of that, I've been keeping on top of the rats since then and there are far fewer of them, so it's getting tougher and I'm trying something a bit different tonight. I've come out with night vision. What I've got is the Night Sight Viper, which is a really clever unit. There's a camera at the back that clips onto the back of your scope. That sees through your day scope and projects an infrared image onto the screen on top. Because you're seeing through the day scope, there's no need to change your kit. All your aiming points remain exactly the same. You just clip it on and you're ready to go. Now hopefully the stealth that that gives us tonight will enable us to bag a few more rats. Fingers crossed. Although constant shooting pressure has left the rats lamp shy, there are still a few about and I'm confident that I've got the right kit to bring some of those stragglers to book tonight. I'm going for a static approach and I've got a trick in my bag which I hope will keep some of those fidgety rats still while I line up my shots. Right, well there's an obvious rat run down here and it's presumably where the rats are running in to get into where the cattle are and to feed on the maize silage. Now, from past experience, baits don't always work here because the rats are spoilt for choice. There's just a lot of grub around. However, I'm willing to try anything that might swing the odds a little bit more in my favour. So I'm going to try putting down some liquidised cat food bait spots tonight in these likely areas. A little bit out from the runs, so the rats have to come out if they want to settle down and feed on it. And that should just give me a better chance of getting clean headshots because they're going to have to stop and feed if they want to get a mouthful of that. By setting out baits in strategic spots, I hope the rats will settle exactly where I want them. Rats love to follow straight edges and the bottom of this gateway is an obvious run to put a bait spot along. I would imagine they'll be following this line as they make their way into the cattle later on. Hopefully this bait spot will stop them long enough for me to get a shot while they're on their way across. Of course, another great thing about using these bait spots is that I can pace out my ranges and I know exactly what distance I'm taking shots over, assuming that the rats stop on them. Arriving just before nightfall has given me just enough light, not only to get into position, but also to ensure that all the high-tech kit is working properly before darkness closes in. Right, we're all set now, it's just a question of waiting for the light to go and for the rats to start moving. Another gadget that I'm using tonight is the Newton CVR640 from Thomas Jacks. Now, this plugs into the night sight and basically sees what I see through the screen and that will enable us to record that so you can see the action as it unfolds. I'm using the Air Arms Ultimate Sporter tonight and apart from being a very accurate air gun, it's also very quiet and that should be a real advantage against these wary rats this evening. Best of all, it's got a very flat underside so shooting through the screen on the night sight I can actually rest it on my lap, look at what's happening on the screen and shoot without actually having to shoulder the rifle. 
and that flat underside keeps it incredibly steady. I've seen one or two rats moving in the undergrowth on the other side of the fence, but they've not given me a clear shot just yet. It's getting dark now. I'm going to change over to night vision. Hopefully, the darkness will give those rats confidence to venture out, and I'll be able to pick them off. We're also going to change over to the night vision camera now. It's just a question of settling down and waiting now. Hopefully, those rats will emerge and tuck into the baits. We're recording in infrared, so our camera is picking up the glow from the night sight's illuminator. Through the naked eye it's invisible, so there's no beam of light to spook the rats, if they decide to venture out. We really are having to be patient tonight. Firstly, there just aren't a lot of rats left on the farm, but secondly, it's a really cold night, and I reckon any rats that are still here are going to be reluctant to venture out in this cold weather. But I'm not ready to admit defeat just yet. After going to the trouble of setting out those bait spots, I'm determined to make it work. So I continue scanning the darkness through the night sight screen, in the hope of picking out a marauding rat. Finally patience pays off, and the rats begin to leave their nests in search of food. There's another one out. Actually, there's two. These rats have caught a whiff of that bait spot, but they're still reluctant to venture right out. But my night vision setup means I can line up the shot without spooking them and giving just a little holdover for the close range. two there then, I picked the one that offered the clearest shot but hopefully the other one will be back out soon. And it's not long before the ultimate sporter gets another chance to demonstrate its clinical precision. very patient but there are a few venturing out. What rats remain are certainly on the move now. It's not exactly hectic sport but I sit it out in the hope of more opportunities at the scaly tails as the moon climbs higher in the night sky. At last I get another rat in my sights. It initially looks as if this one is too wily to offer me a shot and it slips underneath the heavy duty plastic beneath the gate. But I keep the night sight trained on the spot and Ratty soon makes the mistake of creeping back out. There's another one. That's another great thing about the Ultimate Sporter. The slick side lever operated 10 shot mag makes life a heck of a lot easier than fumbling around for pellets in the dark. And so the vigil continues and I carry on scanning through the darkness until I spot another rat sniffing around its fallen brethren. It threatens to disappear from sight then turns back to offer me a shot that I waste no time in taking. Right, well we've had four and I reckon that's going to be our lot for tonight. It has been tricky, but now it's an important time to keep on top of rat control. 
because the numbers are low, it's all too easy to get tempted away and head off somewhere else where you think you're going to get more shots. But if you keep the pressure on, the rats won't come back, and that's going to make your farmer very happy. Night vision's made a big difference for us tonight. Because the rats have been twitchy and there haven't been a lot about, the last thing I want to do is shine lamplight on them and spook them away. So that really has given us a great advantage. I'm freezing cold now, so I'm going to get these rats picked up, flicked into the slurry pit and head for home. Night vision proving its worth on some wily farmyard rats there. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show news. This is the Air Gun Show news. Brought to you by the Air Gun Center. The Ewa Outdoor Classics Show in Nuremberg is one of the world's biggest showcases of shooting hardware and accessories. Here's some of the top air gunning gear we spotted during last week's 2015 exhibition. Showtime is about making a statement, and Gunpower certainly did that with the new Mega High Power Texan. This sledgehammer of a PCP spits out 350 grain .45 caliber air bullets at a whopping 500 foot pounds. You only get two shots per fill, but at that power, those two shots are going to make a serious mess of your target. Okay, it's the new gun power Texan. It's a 45 caliber, pushing out 500 foot pounds. We're using a 350 grain 45 caliber pellet. It's a side lever cocking, single shot. And out of the 500 cc tank, we're actually only getting two shots, but at that power, how many do you expect? Really pleased with it. British gunmaker Brocock was eager to show off its compact new Compato PCP. Set for launch later this year, the Shogun was still in its prototype guise, but the production Compato will feature a side lever action with a slick 10 shot magazine, adjustable power, and an innovative semi ballpup stock. Everything's new on this ride. It has a new magazine, new side lever action. Shrouded barrel, pressure gauge in the end with a rotary filler cover, and this brand new short stop. Oh, and by the way, a new trigger mechanism as well. Brand new beginning from Brocock, the Brocock Compatible. Uh, first of all, this new magazine, all aluminium, clips into the middle and has this most fantastic uh, no gap system with an indexing port at the front. And also a paddle safety cap, which is in the front of the so you can come off the shot and just pop the safety catch on and off. On to another semi ballpup, and this time it's the new FX Wildcat. This multi shot PCP affirms the Swedish gunmaker's reputation for cramming big features into compact air guns. It comes with a regulator for supreme consistency and features an all new magazine system. I'm very proud to showing you the new FX Wildcat. Very light, very neat, super sleek, full pop. Have the cocking lever where you want it to be. Very nice magazine system. Trigger is fantastic. Super nice, light, good gun. With a regulator as standard. A good number of shots. Yeah, what more do you want? The ingenious walking flip target has won a huge following over the last year, and the new Max version is set to win it even more fans. The target still has its neat, impact-resistant Polax frame, plus an even faster connecting system, and now has AR500 steel faceplates, which eliminate the risk of ricochet when using air guns close to the 12 foot per pound legal limit. You have an um, impossibility of ricochet with this. The, the metal stops the bullet and it, and it falls 
right down in front of you. Uh, the minimum distance is uh, even even five to, to ten meters, and you're safe. Um, the, the power uh, air gun that you choose to use, if it's a medium to very high power, the max is the model that you're going to want. Tactical air guns reign supreme at this year's Iwa show, and the new Benjamin Armada turned plenty of heads. The Super Tactical Multi-Shot PCP is stacked out with accessory rails and comes with a bipod and telescopic sight. It should find its way to UK stores via Distributors ASI very soon. And what's special about the Armada, it's got an accessory rail that's licensed by Magpul, the world's largest AR accessory maker. This uses their all-new Amalok attachment system. Now this gun comes with a center point optic and a bipod. It's got an AR style stock and hand grip. And this is going to be available real, real soon. D-State's spanking new Pulsar has already received an upgrade. The first 200 to roll off production line will be limited edition Oro series models, with gold match trigger, side lever and intermount, plus mouth-watering high-grade walnut woodwork. Hello, I'm Tony B. Nash from D-State. This is the Pulsar OS, Oro series is what it stands for, and Oro is the Italian word for gold. And we've put some gold features on this rifle, gold cocking lever, gold intermount and gold match trigger blade as well as a, a small gold feature on the up the UNF adapter on the end of the rifle. This is to distinguish it from the standard rifle which will be coming a little later, about six weeks later. But the main feature of the Oro is this beautiful piece of walnut. It has a high grade walnut stock that in itself costs £150 and just adds to the feature of the gun and this is not to be repeated. So the people who buy the limited edition the first round of 200 rifles get all these features and this beautiful wood on a gun case. The Hawk Optics team was showing off their slick new branding and the new range of Frontier scopes. The flagship telescope sights come in 530x50 guys and a 2.515x15 model that focuses down to just 10 meters. They are available with Hawk's illuminated TMX or LR dot reticule and also feature side focus wheels. Uh, the 2.5 to 15 has a close parallax range of uh, 10 yards and the 5 to 30 has a close parallax range of 30 yards, uh, which is great for air gun shooting. Uh, side focus parallax, 11 step uh, red illuminated reticle. Again, there are two choices of reticle. One is a uh, LR dot, which is uh, based around the German L4 hunting dot, which is a red illuminated dot with two uh, hash marks underneath for extra holdover points. And the other reticle is a TMX reticle, which is more uh, for tactical and air gun shooting with loads of uh, holdover points and windage bracketing. Uh, quarter MOA turrets and a very high class optical system makes this our flagship scope. That's just some of the many air gunning highlights from EWA 2015. You can see even more in the May issue of Air Gun Shooter magazine out Thursday the 26th of March. That was the Air Gun Show news. This week's test rifle is not your average air gun. The Daystate Wolverine B has a suggested retail price of £1,142. Yet the popularity of this air gun certainly suggests that punters are prepared to pay for top quality. So let's take a closer look and see just what you get for your money. Starting with the metalwork, it's absolutely flawless. The anti-glare black finish not only protects the metal from the elements, but also cuts down those telltale flashes that can spook a hunter's quarry. On top of that, it looks the business and perfectly complements the Wolverine's Minelli stock. And that woodwork is something special too. The walnut stock not only looks fantastic, it also functions brilliantly. The fore end is plenty long enough to keep your hands off of the buddy bottle and the distinct curve on the soft butt pad really does lock into your shoulder. The sculpted pistol grip has a comfortable palm swell and sets you up perfectly for precise trigger control. There's some nice stippling on there for improved grip plus the neat looking Wolverine mascot. The ambidextrous stock really does fit like a glove and although it's a thumb hole, all holds are catered for. I particularly like the thumb support which enables you to adopt a really relaxed thumb up hold. 
The high cheek piece gives brilliant scope alignment and the scope rails are plenty long enough to give you plenty of options when it comes to scope mounting. Measuring up at 107 centimetres, the Wolverine is not a small gun, yet it weighs just 3.3 kilos unscoped. And although it looks quite bulky, its balance is absolutely excellent. There's some real day-state magic at work when you shoulder the Wolverine. You hardly even know you're holding it. Filling is via Daystate's quick fill connector in the underside of the stock. Just pop off the cap, couple it up, and you're ready to fill. You can expect a very healthy 250 shots at just under 12 foot-pounds in 2.2 calibre from a 220 bar fill, or about 200 shots in 177 calibre. The 2.2 30 foot-pound FAC version still delivers 65 shots per fill and there's a pressure gauge in the side of the stock which makes it very easy to keep an eye on air reserves. Daystate's 10-shot rotary magazine does stand proud of the action, but it's unlikely to cause problems unless you intend to use particularly low scope mounts. Just pull back the bolt and the magazine slides out very smoothly, and you can determine which side by moving the stop pin. The cutaway makes it very easy to reload before you slide it back in, where it's held in place by magnets, and then return the bolt to make it ready to fire. The bolt action is robust, but also very slick. Pull it back to index the magazine and cock the gun, and then the forward stroke probes the pellet home. The system is positive, but also precise, and worked flawlessly during our testing. A single shot tray is also available. The two-stage trigger is fully adjustable, and its flat, curved blade cradles your index finger perfectly. I'm a big fan of Daystate's electronic trigger systems, yet this mechanical version is also excellent. The first stage comes to a distinct stop, and the second stage is so crisp and easy to predict that it quickly becomes subconscious. The safety switch is well positioned, particularly if you use the thumb up hold, and it's very positive to operate. Right, that's enough talk, let's see how the Wolverine shoots. Well, you really can't argue with that. The combination of consistent power, good gun fit, an excellent trigger, and that match grade barrel makes the Wolverine an incredibly accurate air gun. Bit of a breeze whistling over the range today, so we pulled the target into 20 meters, but this five shot group is virtually pellet on top of pellet. The shrouded barrel does give a bit of sound suppression, but there is still some muzzle crack. So if you're a hunter, and want to hush this gun right down, it is threaded to accept the silencer and Daystate's Airstream will silence it down to a whisper. To sum up, it really is hard to find fault with the Wolverine B. It's a top quality air gun that most shooters are going to feel proud to own. But it's not just about the bling. This gun's going to deliver all that you ask of it and more when it comes to performance. It may not be cheap, but you certainly get your money's worth. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits they're offering to Airgun members. Yeah.